writers' rooms, I, I don't care whether it's a sitcom or a drama, they're amazingly painful places because <laughs> to get the humor, you know, you have to go through those things. You know, what did I do with my family on Thanksgiving or a particular time? You know, what was my family like? So you can imagine how difficult it is to be funny. Um, you know, it was the old saying, you know, comedy is just pain with distance, yeah. with remove. <laughs> Um, so you can imagine to get through these kinds of stories, we have individuals sharing things that are incredibly particular, incredibly personal. So it really begins with conversations. Again, Michael, I think, undersells his role in those conversations, you know, bringing in writers, then bringing in technical experts, people who've literally labored on the farm, work with trafficking, you know, work with individuals who are extricating them from sex trafficking. I just, it's, Painful, but it's painful of service of saying <coughs> things that are outside of my experience, hopefully outside of the experience of the audience. I hope no one's gone through this, but for people who then look it up or search a little bit longer, realize, yeah, yeah it's painful, it's true. You know, sometimes a part feels like a high wire act and you're sort of juggling while you're on the wire. This felt more like I was in a dark room with furniture that I had to figure out and I didn't know what I was doing. So I didn't know if it was gonna work because I usually, play parts with some agency and some power, and she um, had very little of that. Her identity was wrapped up in her marriage, um, and it was through awakening to the injustices that happened around her that seemed necessary that she also woke up to that there was no me in the we of our marriage. Um, so how did I do that? Um, I, I don't know. You know, you. The way you usually, or I, I usually approach a part is by figuring out um, what their raison d'etre is. And uh, I felt that with Jeanette, her raison d'etre was, I'd like to help, I wanna help you. And she starts out saying, I'd like to help my husband, I just wanna make it nice for him. And then when she sees what's happening with the uh, immigrant workers, she goes, oh, I'd like to help them and I'm sure you want to help them too. And it's heartbreaking when she goes, oh, oh you don't wanna help them? Does that answer your question? It does. It, it does. does. <laughs> it's 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 so great. Why, why do you think this point? This is when she finds her voice. Why do you think it was like this particular point? Because I don't know if there are opportunities in her past that maybe you thought about or. Well, I think something happens with women when they get older, and and this is what happens biologically. Women lose estrogen and gain testosterone. <laughs> and so, <laughs> it's good and bad. That's why I have hair on my chin right now. But. Um, but women spend uh, <laughs> women spend a lot of time um, taking care of everybody else when they're younger, and then as you change, when you go through the change, you start going, "Oh, I'd like to be more me-centric." And men do the opposite; they're very outwardly, and then as they get older and their testosterone drops and the estrogen goes up, they start to go, "Oh, I'd like to take care of you in a, in a different way." And so I think Jeanette, because she's older, unlike me, mm. um, <laughs> uh, has started to go, wait, what about me? And you start to look around to the world. Mm. I think that's why. 